Today's adventure brings me to the small town of only 5,000 residents in North Carolina of Wadesboro, where one of, well, I have a lot, but one of my favorite horror films took place back in the summer of 86. The movie came out in 87, the sequel to a classic. Turn this around, Evil Dead 2. Welcome everyone, Adam the Woo here. Scott on tape is also tagging along. I love the franchise, Ash, all of that TV series that came out after it, but I would say a tie between the original, sometimes I flip back and forth, and part two. Do you care for the film? How are you on the level of, of Evil Dead status? Well, I mean, I'm a huge fan of Pauly Shore, so I celebrate his entire catalog, so I haven't missed one film. You're thinking about Biodome. I am thinking about Biodome. Ash, Evil Dead. Ash, I love Evil Dead. I love Evil Dead 2. I love Army of Darkness. People, uh, people thought it was a remake at first, because of the beginning. Kind of, sort of is. Right. And then it goes off the rail, and it's not a remake. It is Very amazing. similar. A lot bigger budget yeah. than the original. Nonetheless, we are standing in the town where it was filmed. It's unbelievable, because this is a very, very small town. To think that they came here that long ago. Tell, tell the story about who the producer is and how that whole thing happened. Well, Dino De Laurenta is one of our favorite producers. who produced a lot of classic 80s films. We just did Maximum Overdrive. Right. Uh, Stephen King was making Maximum Overdrive, and then he loved, loved Evil Dead. Right. But Sam Raimi couldn't get the financing. So Stephen King took Dino De Laurentiis out for dinner and said, you should put money behind this film. Right. You should do it. So they did it, but Dino De, uh, De Laurentiis had a contract with the studio where he couldn't release unrelated films. Uh, unrated films. Unrated. Unrated films. Right. Unrelated. Unrated films. So... Got to change the production company name to Rosebud. Where we get Rosebud at the beginning. We're going to go to some spots and where the cabin was in the woods. See it from a distance, probably. It's been removed, and then also go to where the set was built. That's the big one. That's right? the big one. That's amazing. We're gonna end with that. I'm inviting you to join me, Scott on tape. Shall we? Okay, made the two mile commute from that sign over to Diggs Road to this property, which I knew I wasn't gonna be able to get on. This is a private residence. And the house at the very end, by the way, as the recording of this, it is February 13th, Sunday, 2022. The house at the end of this stretch up the top was used in the color purple, which for the production of the horror film was up there as well. But really they had two production facilities. The other next to the gym, which I will be going to a little bit later. And somewhere in the woods adjacent to this is where the outdoor scenes from the cabin stood. There weren't a lot, just some of Ash outside with Linda when he's in the puddle, things like that. and then. You know, some kind of running through the woods, the low angles where they're kind of showing the creature going through the woods as it approaches the cabin. Not a lot, but a couple of exteriors. All that's been removed. Someone actually bought the woodshed five years ago and takes it to conventions. Also very interesting that Diggs Road in the corner of Hollywood Road is where this house is. Well, just across the way. And the rumor is that where the cabin stood was sold to some tree farmers and they came in and bulldozed the, the trees, took the trees away. I don't know if that's true, that's all hearsay and rumor. But somewhere over in that section, there's some little trees up there. But do not, I cannot pinpoint the precise spot of where the cabin once was. Somewhere on that property. And here's a view from where they had the production office, where Raimi and the rest of them were. And obviously from Spielberg's Color, color Purple, that's the, that's the house. Just outside town a few miles. Continued on a little further, just a couple miles, to Lylesville, where this was not used in the film at all, but I want to point out this water tower in the distance. But there's an old arcade over here. And look at this. This looks like something that could be used as a house from that genre of movies. And just down the way from here is where the ending of the movie took place. The kind of medievalish when Ash and his car drop in 
and they're all praising him, and then right before the closing credits, I'm, I'm doing this out of sequence, but you get the idea. Lylesville, a couple miles away. If for some reason you get sucked into a time portal, you might end up here over this grassy berm that turns into the medieval era where if your name is Ashley, you and your car could, it's kind of kind of steep up here. Oh, oh man, look could at that. drop into this. Now the interesting thing is off in the distance is a crane. That is the similar type of crane that they hoisted the prop car up on and dropped into this pit. Now it has been several decades since they were out here filming that scene. So none of the dirt piles are going to match up, but you can definitely see and tell this is it. In fact, it would look something like if we were down in the water area looking up, they built a medieval castle prop set either on this side or maybe even up on that big berm of dirt over there. This does not look like North Carolina at all. Like right, like everywhere around us does. This is incredible. But yeah, don't take that step down. That is, that would not be good to head straight down into there. I'll show a couple behind the scenes photos I found as well when they're out here. It's I've just, been, it's the very end, it's yeah, the very end very scene. End, yeah, I've been to a lot of filming locations for my channel. Mm -hmm. I, I honestly, this is blowing me away. It's pretty the cool. The look looking. of it and to find that, that you found it and the look of it. This is incredible. Wow. And this basically would be the lead in to Army of Darkness, which yeah. was the third one. And here's the whole cast and crew getting a photo op below that little dirt berm there with the, the fake castle they built at the top. Also here is a view from kind of where we were standing across the trees at the fake castle and the car there as it's being hoisted to drop in for that last moment. And a couple more building the facade out of wood there. See the trees off in the distance, top of the hill, as well as this looking back the other way, up on the top of that dirt hill from the bottom level. And as we're sitting here about to pull away, we're kind of thinking it was built right here because obviously the truck construction trucks and stuff would have had to have been right here from the street side and the trees off in the distance kind of match up almost exactly match up with the higher on the left, lower on the right. True. Yeah, take a look at this road. Heading towards the airport now, very small airport in this area. And these trees have a life of their own as well. And just for about a minute or two scene, right over here is where Annie and her research partner, Professor Ed, showed up on the plane in this very building here at the Anson County Airport right along there with a field elevation of 305 feet it is very very windy out here yeah. even know if you're going to be able to hear what I'm saying I have my hand cupped over the microphone but that is the, the same angle where she walks out of the plane and they start to head over to the cabin the airplane would have pulled up right there. This is about eight miles north of the last spot, the, the most climactic spot that we're going to spend the most time at. About eight miles north of there. Yeah. We should note that there's only one plane. There's only one plane on the... One plane here. Only one plane. One plane. And here's what the scene looked like there as they're about to load the their luggage in the back of the car. You can see the, the bay doors from the little airport hangar there. Yep, still looks the same. That's more zoomed in though. Yeah, I kind of thought maybe could see a plane taking off and landing. I don't think that's happening. There's the one plane over there in the distance. Just the one plane there off on the horizon. As the recording of this, it is a Sunday. Maybe no one in this area flies in and out on a weekend. Or maybe in February. Or maybe just at all out of here. And this is out, this is kind of out here. Oh yeah. Also noticing in this area, there's a very unique smell outside. There's also a lot of cow pastures. That's what it is. 
No, that's not, that's not you out there? All right, I, well, I just wasn't sure. A lot of cows out there. I can even see it making this turn down there behind this newer building, which appears to be a church of some sort. Now it is later in the day, currently 3.30, so I believe whatever service they had earlier, the congregation has already left. But down at the end, at the bottom of this hill, is an abandoned structure that was a gym that they built the sets of the cabin. I am starting to get really excited. I should also mention I had heard about this, but I never knew that you could gain access to it until about six months ago. A friend of mine, Tampa Jay, was here. So I'll give a little shout out to him because he was the one to inform me that this was still not only standing for posterity, I want to document this because this place looks like it could be torn down at any moment. And he also let me know that it is open. The side doors, windows, everything, none of the boards are up. You can just walk right in. So that's what I'm going to do. Look at this. Okay, as we're approaching, I also want to mention that there's a lot of behind the scenes footage that is out there on the interwebs of the entire cast and crew kind of congregating over in this area. Come a little bit closer. In fact, this, this building that's abandoned that we're gonna be able to go inside, mm -hmm. over here was the second production office. There's the one that was where the exteriors of the cabin were. But over here, and I will kind of line up a few, a few frames showing where Greg Nicotero was walking by here, Sam Raimi, some of the actors, actresses, were all walking over in here and they used a lot of the props, they made a lot of the props inside, had them stored in this very building. This one right here on the left? This one right here. Wow. They now have this awning, but this awning used to not be here. And I found some old photos of them walking in and out of this very door here. Now these were all windows that are now boarded up. But if you've seen, and th this franchise has a huge following. Yes. There's a lot of people who are really into it. Not just me, not just you, but it is the, not just horror people, but there are people who specifically love this franchise. And they've probably seen some of the behind the scenes stuff. This, this door is, right here. This is almost as important what? as what is in the movie yeah. itself. Of them walking in and out of here, going on their lunch breaks, Exiting out of here, there's some home video from back in the 80s, 80s, probably summer of 86, movie came out in 87, of them walking in and out of this very door. I'm hoping we can go around and get coming in and out of here and just see what's on the other right. side of this. But they walk into here. In fact, the Oldsmobile, I believe it was an Oldsmobile that was the prop that Ash drove, was parked right here on the side of this road. The same one that went through the little time, time hole went back in time, was dropped over there from the right. crane. It was sitting right here, and someone lived in that little abandoned house right there. That's crazy. And there was a fence, a chain link fence that went across here, and this was not even an active street. Is it dirt, was it a dirt road, or what it was, was it? It was either dirt, or it was just blocked off by a fence, and this was all one big property. And so this is, a, this is an old school we're looking at. Because yes. uh, I know that one of the classrooms was changed into a gymna a gym. This is the gym. No, 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 a, a personal gym for, um, what's his name? Ash, for Bruce Campbell, Bruce to Campbell. work out. In here? Yeah, one, one classroom I with a gym. I didn't realize that. Yeah, and that's why he's so ripped at the end because he was working out every day on set. Are you talking about his chin or his body? His body, <laughs> that chin was, I don't know how they did that. Let me show the photo. This, yeah. Right now, I'm nerding out right now. Oh, me too. Standing right now. Uh, we're just driving that door. I just wanna say that I've only seen one picture of inside of here. And Adams told me all about what was filmed in here. I'm gonna be watching, because I know filming locations and I know how to find places, but I can get easily frustrated inside places. I'm gonna be watching <laughs> the sleuth, watching. the master. Oh, come on. No, no come on. Not the master. You're, you're, to line up these shots inside, because when okay. you see what it looks like inside, I know what it looks like already. I haven't looked inside, but from the picture. How you're gonna mash these up is gonna be exciting to see. All right, well, I appreciate the vote of confidence, man. Thank you. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm this, really excited. It's interesting because this, these were glass windows over here. Those were all glass windows. Let me show the photos. But this here, there's no one on property at there's the moment. Over. 
Oh, there's cement. Oh, there's cinder block. Yeah. Cinder block. Look Ooh. at that. Yeah, this. See, I th I would assume that the city will tear this down sooner than later. You know, in this in this area, you never know. There's a lot of dilapidated buildings. That's we, true. We passed a lot of them. But I feel like this needs to be documented in great detail oh, yeah. and length. Also, just think about it. There's Sam Raimi there with that look of, what am I going to film next? What angle am I going to use? Not even knowing, standing exactly where this angle was with the Oldsmobile. Right there, looking down the hill. And the house behind him was the one down, kind of over in that area. Before he was even really Sam Raimi. Like, he was Sam. But he wasn't the... He to his friends, but he was not Sam Raimi to the world. Right. And in that photo was the chain link fence. This building over here really fascinates me because when she's recording the home video, she goes, oh yeah, people live over there. And that house is still standing. From that home video, the behind the scenes, here is one of the crew kind of waving to the person who is recording the video's parents saying hello. And behind him is that house that is now empty that I was just talking about. So he would have been like, hi mom, hi dad, right there. And all that behind the scenes footage, if you can find it, was all through here. Like I said, almost to me, being a fan of the, the series, just as important as the movie that took place, almost 90% of the movie directly behind what we're about to walk into. Pretty much the whole film. Now this is the backside of Greg Nicotero, who went on to do a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. Romero's Day, he is a main integral part of the very popular TV show now, Walking Dead. Got his start working for Tom Savini, and one of the, his first major films, where he did a lot of makeup effects and horrifying creatures on, was right here. This is the, the angle of that photo, they had the production truck right here. This has all been added. And they even did a little short film called the Evil Dead Baby. And they did it right inside this two-story building oh, really? through this door, which is all boarded up. Yeah. The doors obviously changed a lot. And over here, there was kind of an interesting concrete formation, which has been removed. Shown right here, so you see that's the interesting con concrete formation. But there's the door. All the crews going in there to get their lunch. And there's this little protrusion there from that little other side. And that's that little protrusion there of the little side brick. This might be a little too, covering this a little too thoroughly. You got but it, you got to. Even this could be gone one day. You never know. Yeah. But I mean, look at that heavy bar. Yeah. The door's not just locked, that is secure. We're not getting in there. Yeah. And this is looking back the other way. So this production truck with even more of the cast waving, little did they know that the world would see this footage later and analyze it in great detail. But the truck would have been right here, so they would have been standing waving towards that door, which led into where the, the cabin was built, kind of the opposite angle. And the windows that are above the truck are these windows right up there. Now, after looking at another photo, the car, the prop car, which who knows where that is, probably in a junkyard somewhere. The prop car was right here along the side of this. All, actually, it was parked right, not in the road, but right here on the side of this little concrete embankment with the windows off in the distance. Kind of more like this, because you can see- The house. You can see the house off in the distance. So that's the angle. There was an air conditioned unit kind of popping out of the side of those windows there. And there's the car and there's that house now kind of just sitting there rotting away off in the distance. Same angle, same everything. And as Scott just pointed out, the windows are gone and it's been cinder blocked over with the, where the windows here on the left are. Now here is the act, one of the other actors that were in it. And you can see that house off in the distance that once again, that abandoned home, which is, I'm glad it's still standing because it really proves that this was the spot. Well, one of the key landmarks. Right. I do stand corrected on one thing. The photo I showed of the other gentleman a moment ago was not Greg Nicotero. This is Greg Nicotero walking towards those ice machines in the same area. That was a, another cast member, which could not pinpoint exactly who it was, but it wasn't Greg. That, the one I just showed was Greg. And here is the prop for Linda when she does the dance sequence a little bit later. You know, deadite zombie Linda. And the crew member is carrying that dummy 
right along there and you can see the little stairwell up there and everything that's the same angle obviously that concrete embankment is gone but that's a pretty famous scene and the time has come we're heading in i wanted to get adam's reaction i wanted to see adam's face when he sees inside here i know he knows it, it looks like whoa oh my the other doorway looks a little better to go into my goodness have you explained what this was? Yes, this is where the cabin was right. created. It was a gym. And uh, yes, the gymnasium. All of the cabin set was in here. It was a two-story set because they could have the cellar. They could make things happen through the floorboards. So what you're seeing in the movie, the first floor, was on a second level. And I'll show you how it was set up in there and where the stairs went up. And I'll try to be in the same spots and maybe we can recreate some scenes. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Wow. This place has seen better days. You think? I think this is the town, almost the town dump now. People just come this here and. Bad. Yeah. I mean, look at this stuff. People just come and just discard whatever they have. But you can still see old school chairs, lots of them, here desks. Is what is so awesome. <laughs> there are some behind the scenes video and photo of the set right here of Bruce Campbell right here in the same spot on a harness, practicing the circling around, doing the stunts for when he's gonna go through the time portal. The cabin would have been right here, the two-story cabin. The first set of stairs was kind of right here, wherever this little desk thing is going up. Cabin would have started here and went over almost against that very wall. And that door, which we need to kind of make our way over there. Yeah, that's that the door, the they, door they use in and out. To go in and out of over to the makeshift production facility. Right, so to give perspective, that door is on the, just where we were filming all that other side, on the other side. Okay, here's the photo of the actor that was out front there. He kind of played like the hillbilly, if you will. Because I believe he had some false teeth that he used. Like that's how he got the, uh, he got the gig. But he's helping Bruce Campbell himself do his stunts. But notice up here the roof line and the little banisters up top and those windows, that angle was right there with the harnesses and everything and the very unique roof line, which is caving in. This is probably not the safest place to wander around, but gotta do it. We gotta do it. This is for poor posterity. That side there, just turning towards that yep, way. Yep, right on that corner. Wow. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> That's incredible, that's right there. So think about it. You see those windows. That was before Bruce Campbell was the Bruce Campbell. What's it? And it's almost. You can see the different color paint even still. Right. Yeah. You know, crazy. So kind of where this guy over here in the jeans in the corner is is where we are standing, looking. So if this guy turned around, he would be looking at the staircase that led up to the far right side which would have been about like this. So you would have been standing there from that angle. You could walk up a staircase and go across. The one photo I have, we're gonna have to walk over there to match up where the cabin and the roof can be seen. And the green or blue screen used for the time portal. There's Bruce in front of it. And you see this kind of window up here in the corner. That is from this angle. You're kind of in the same general area where the ladder would have been. Oh, yeah. So he was up on the ladder and the blue green screen, where there's a blue wall. I thought it would be a, a green screen, but maybe they just have it. Excuse me, it's a green screen, right? Right, yeah. So a green screen, but in the photo, it's blue. Probably it's aged. And then up top here is how you can really tell. And then that, that corner window. Plus, when we walked in, there was the one of the actor helping him out and would give kind of the same angle going this way against these side windows. Now, after he got done practicing those stunts, they built another front facade of the cabin that they only utilized for him flying through the door through the time portal. Now look up top here, the, the railings, it's in between those two railings. So over here you can see how this protrusion of the railings go up and down. That is directly above where I'm at looking back, kind of walked across the gym to the other side. Which would have been right about there. And the railings I was just mentioning are those railings, almost like going right down the middle of those railings that I just showed in the photo. Now the one angle I have 
The only photo I could see that was a behind the scenes of the cabin itself was taken from this general area. So the cabin stretched from there. So if we would have walked in the door right behind me, back in 1980, summer of 86, you would have seen the cabin right here, a two-story cabin. Cellar right down here. Someone's in my fruit cellar. And the top of the cabin above it. Okay, if the front of the cabin is right there, we walked in. Where the cellar was kind of in the middle, just off to the left, if memory serves me correctly. So this would have kind of been where the, where the cellar was. Someone's in my fruit cellar. Henrietta played by Ted Ramey, Sam's brother, when he was very young. He was only 20 years old, his first acting gig. Of course, Sam has gone on to make Spider-Man. I think he also did Dark Man. Yeah. He has a legendary Hollywood director now. And really, it kind of started here in a way. Obviously, it was six years after the first one, and they did a movie in between that. But this one really kind of catapulted him into legendary status. So below here... This could have been where that wooden staircase was with the rock wall beside it where Henrietta is, is you know, chasing Ash up, right. up the staircase. Like, let me out! Let me out of here! And she unlocked the chain. Oh my gosh. Because well, we're, we're getting closer to that door. That's so the that's, door. That's where they would have come in, right? So we're right, right. We're, right now where we are standing Towards, where the cabin was built. Absolutely. 100%. Right so that is the front door when they're going out and that behind the scenes footage, going out on lunch, their lunch break. These almost look like the, the plates that Ash was smashing over his head when the, hand went, when, the, when the hand went a little nuts. They're not movie props. None of this is from the movie, but kind of fun to imagine. Yeah, you kind of think that, you kind of, your mind's playing, well, my mind should be thinking that some of this could be, but it's just, it's a mess. So odd feeling being in here. I'm also noticing there's a big bay door right here where they might have been able to move stuff in and out. That's probably where they brought the set pieces in. For sure. And built it. I mean, those back ones are way too small. Ah, to be yeah. a fly on the wall. I'm sure we're gonna find plenty of flies on the wall here. Once again, nerding out a little too much, but this is probably the best to compare with any of it. Take a gander there at the windows over to the far end of the wall. Windows over here to the far other side of the wall and the banisters and the roof line. Standing where I'm at, if I had a wide lens that was used to take this behind the scenes photo of the cabin, this proves that everything you see in the movie in the cabin was up on a second level. And anything that happened in the basement, the basement was behind that wall on the bottom level. So the cellar was here. Was Henrietta, come to sweet Henrietta. All of it was right here in front of us. So in this general area here, the cabin right behind me. I'm channeling Bruce Campbell and Sam <laughs> Raimi. Just gotta be, be careful of Henrietta. And fun fact, the last scene that they did in here was when they pretty much had the engulfing of blood going everywhere because it was so messy that they, they ruined the set. So that was the thing they did last. And the first one was the whole hand, the knife through the hand, the chainsaw, all that. From what I've heard, that was the first thing they did in here. So first and last, that was the first and last scenes that they did in there. They kind of did it out of order. This place is full of lots of Remnants of the past, like this doll head there. There's oh, is that Linda's head? <laughs> is that Linda's head where it's like, it bites Ash's hand? There's doll heads, stuffed animals, and videotapes everywhere. What if we found a videotape of the movie? Well, come over here with me, Adam, because I have to return some videotapes, by the way. Oh, another movie, another, another classic. Oh, no way, what is it? Copy of the sequel. Scooby Doo 2. <laughs> Close. <laughs> Same genre. Oh my gosh. Maybe that's where the that's the headless doll. I think so. That's gotta be it. Okay, we were mentioning this outside. So that is the door right there that they exit in and out of. 
But there's another door, another section that they were also using, you know, where some of the cast would be kind of waiting for their scenes and some of the crew would be back. And I think those still exist back behind there. So we should walk over yeah. there. Yeah, this is so dang. We just gotta watch where you step. This isn't the safest area. It goes from hard to mushy very fast. This is parts of the roof that have caved in. So yeah, not, not the best option. And a lot of shoes. There are a lot of discarded shoes. You okay? I just stepped on I just, I just stepped on something. Okay, going in. Oh, look at the paint. We don't you don't want to touch this. No. Okay, going into this room. This is all caved in. Yeah, it's hard to match any of this up, but they did have some kind of couches and stuff sitting in some of these rooms. Wow, look at that. And it could have been, could have been this room or possibly there's also a, there's also a wasp nest over there or it could be the ones down over here. The next room over, it's gonna be tough to get in. This is pretty. Wait, yeah. this doorway over here. Or is that, do you I think, think that's that a separate room as well? It could be. Let's go over there and see. Again, you gotta watch where you're walking. There are just dolls everywhere through and here. And lampshades. I'm seeing a lot more lampshades in this area. If I put one on my head, that's pretty funny. Okay, now this is all, can't get through here. I am just so happy to be in here right now. Used as a basketball gym, obviously. In fact, one of the basketball hoops is still over there. Probably have a tough time. Oh, you got something on you? Something? What is it? Look, take a look. Zoom in on me. Oh. I'm pin legs, not pin head. Oh, I'm yeah, pin legs. Look, what is that? I don't know. I don't know what I do. I don't have them on me. Oh, I do have them on me. Yeah, you do. Just so much happened right here in this space. Mattresses come to the mattress king. I've got them all. How many mattresses? Are You're the mattress king. I'm the mattress king. I sell mattresses in Waysboro, North Carolina. Look at this. Wow. Did you show that? I was like that. Yeah, that's that's probably not safe. Should probably be probably shouldn't be underneath that. Yeah, just gonna put that out there. This is probably not the best thing to be kind of walking around. It's not windy outside, but if it was like a strong storm going on, I would not want to be in here. No. If there was a strong wind, if there was a tornado in the area, don't be in here. Because that roof is about ready to cave up. Yeah. And also the interiors of the woodshed, of course the famous overdub during that, woodshed, which is a whole other kind of legend of its own with you know, how bad the, the overdub on that audio was. The interiors of the woodshed would have been right over through here, which of course, what is that? I don't know. Oh, it's like a potted plant. And of course, the famous line. Do you know what famous line I'm talking about? I think so. I'm gonna add, I'm gonna have it with my piping hot caffeinated beverage. Mm -hmm. Groovy. That's about an hour into the movie, right? Oh. We finally, he finally says it like an hour in? I don't have a chainsaw hand. <laughs> now if I could find the chainsaw card out here. Oh, look! What are we looking at? Is this what he took Linda's head off with? It's still here. He just goes. <laughs> and that happened over there at the other property way out in the woods. Right. This is not screen used. No. But it might be. We don't know. We don't know. I may or not put this on a mantle <laughs> at my homestead. <laughs> I'm not taking this with me, but yeah. In memory of Linda. Oh, look how cute this is right here. I swallow your soul. I swallow your soul. I swallow your soul. Swallow this. I thought you were going to, I don't want you to fall off that chair. That was good though. That was good. The snowman played a pretty good. Uh, that's the, probably us all. That's probably it's us almost all. like snowman with a Freddy Krueger outfit on. Yeah, he's done. Got Adam's camera now, and right around here, this is where Henrietta is spinning around 
on top of Annie, going, ah, 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 until finally up from the basement comes. Say it. He will, I can't whistle very good. <laughs> Let's go. All right, one last little peek here. Who knows if the next time I'm in this area, this will even exist anymore. Bulldozers might come. They have to clean all this out first. Yeah. This is like a demolished thrift store. This cash registers, adding machines. You and I have been to a few abandoned filming locations or locations where the owners have given us permission to be somewhere. And once you're there or yeah. here, you don't want to leave. Even if you yeah. covered every square inch, it's like how often right. do you get access to something exactly. like this? It's incredible. Because every inch of this had cast members, crew members, yeah. and this props. This is, yeah, this, the term might be overused, horror history, but this is, yeah. this is legit horror history yeah. right here. One of my own boxes is here. One of your own, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> right over here, yeah. Yeah, I keep them. Oh, okay. Deliver stuff to you got a little history here too? Every now and again, yeah. Oh, is this one of the clocks that was on the wall? Probably not. <laughs> we found a chainsaw in here. Oh, that man. would be, or a reel to reel. Yeah. It looks. Or like maybe it. the book of, of Necronomicon. All right, this was awesome, and oh, I am some glad someone had the wherewithal back then to take a VHS Griswold style camera, and walk around and document all that behind the scenes stuff. Because that, like I said, to me is very fascinating. And that's how you kind of know where stuff was, took place here. All right, going back outside, see what's kind of around the building. I'm just gonna walk around the back. Now I feel like I'm really in the woods. Well, I'm going through the woods. Oh, there's some thorns there. Oh, it's just like a boiler room of some sort. Ready? Yeah. Someone's hiding in my fruit cellar. Sweet Henrietta. All right. That was on the other side? Yeah. That's the one we were in that room. This is the room we were in? Yeah, that leads into the gym. This part? Yeah, yeah, this is this was the far room. Oh, wow. Oh, maybe you're right. Maybe it is enclosed. No, it is enclosed. And that's going to do it for today. Evil Dead 2 was filmed here in Wadesboro, North Carolina. Check out Scott's channel, Scott on Tape. And once again, a little shout out to Tampa J, who let me know that this place was accessible. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for having me, Adam. This is awesome. One of the best, one of the best experiences I've had. You like for it? Sure. I love it. Not only is it abandoned, it's a filming location, but I also got to watch behind the scenes a live Adam the Woo filming location. Yes. That's pretty you, freaking cool. Yeah, I'll edit out the F bomb. The vlog. That's how excited you are! I am. The vlog is really over then. <laughs>